So, Rosie, if I dare say it, you and Sarah didn't lay an egg that night. No, far from it. Sarah was always such a terrific dancer. Our version of the funky chicken had everybody looking on amazed. Yeah. <laughs> they just all stopped just to watch Sarah. Well, how modest of you to say that. Thank you, Rosie Norman. <laughs> After taking your O level, Sarah, you tell your parents that you want to start looking for stage work. A school pal, Deborah Goodman over there, hears of auditions for Pan's people. You're reluctant to go with her, so Deborah, how did you persuade her? Well, I was determined for Sarah to audition, so I just pushed her in through the door and said to her, go for it, bright bum, you can do it. And she did. <laughs> <laughs> and bright bum certainly did get in there, and you become a Pan's person. Then in 1977, Sarah, you joined a sizzling dance troupe, of course it's hot gossip. The pop music business is suddenly aware of a new talent, thanks to your old chum writer, Jeff Calvert, when you record a number he composes for you. You zoom to number six in the charts with I Lost My Heart to a Starship Trooper. Well, after soaring away with Starship, uh, you come back to Earth with a thud, but you've proved you can sing as well as dance. And when you hear of a small part coming up the new musical, you go to the audition. It was in 1981. And Andrew, you'd written the show, which is still breaking box office records the world over. Well, it's called, uh, called something called Cat. <laughs> <laughs> was the success a surprise to you as well? Well, it was an enormous surprise because we all thought that the idea of getting the English to dance a musical as well as to act a musical and to take it on poets, uh, the, the, the poet T.S. Eliot's work would be uh, an impossibility. We opened actually with half our investment missing. And uh, to this day, what happened that night is um, something I think we all remember with incredible kind of fondness and also um, a bit of kind of awe. Hmm. The story develops. Let's see uh, where those friends of yours from Cats have strayed to tonight. Firstly, we hightail it to Oxford, where she's starring in the pop version of Pirates of Penzance, Bonnie Langford. Hello, Sarah, and congratulations on This Is Your Life. I only wish I could be there with you. But as you can see, I'm in a dressing room, getting ready for Pirates of Penzance. And it reminds me of when we shared a dressing room together in Cats for a whole year. And I'm so pleased that you've gone on to achieve the success that you richly deserve. Thank you for being a lovely person and a real friend. Take care, have a lovely evening, and I hope to see you soon. And whatever happened to Mr. Mistopheles? Well, we found him in a dustbin in Dartford. Hello, Michael. Hello, Sarah. When we worked on Cats, we shared a dustbin together. Do you remember we were cooped up in the dark on stage for over 10 minutes for over 300 performances? Anyway, congratulations on all you've done, Sarah. I'm very proud of you. Have fun tonight. And back to Oxford for another star member of that gifted cast, Paul Nicholas. Hello, Sarah. It was while we were appearing in Cats that you let me in to one of your biggest secrets. You came in with a brand new song you just recorded. It was a disco version of the sound of music. With you doing a fabulous impersonation of Julie Andrews. But your secret was out. Because beyond the impersonation was this marvelously clear soprano voice. But don't worry, Sarah. Your secrets are safe with me. <laughs> she always, always never told me that was her. <laughs> now, the first time you've heard that yes, story. Absolutely. Are you still as keen on either Either Paul or she's a liar. <laughs> <laughs> and Sarah, there are two other important members of that company who would like to have their say. As soon as I heard you at rehearsal, I thought you sang like an angel. And I thought you danced with such sensuality and determination. International choreographer of Cats and Phantom of the Opera, Gillian Lynn, and the voice of old Deuteronomy in Cats, Brian Blessed. So 
Joe Bryan, do you recall the first time you heard Sarah sing? Well, yes, it was during rehearsal of Cats, and I just sang the moments of happiness, and Andrew Lloyd Webber said, Sarah! And this extraordinary, angelic, beautiful voice floated across the room, and it made my hair stand on end, and it was absolutely divine. And that's how I see her. And Gillian, she clearly remembered everything she'd been taught at dancing school. Yes, but nobody taught Sarah her guts. And, you know, in Cats, everyone kept hurting themselves because it was uh, difficult, wasn't it? Though? And Sarah kept putting her neck out. And I used to say, Sarah, do you think you should try the Jellicle Ball all 12 minutes of it again? She'd say, yes, I'm not going to sit down, I'm not going to sit down. And she'd dance it like that. And also, I watched her take the role of Phantom. And she was a little bit frightened at the beginning, wasn't she, Andrew? Just a little bit. And I watched her wrestle with it like a dog with a bone and become so wonderful and the best who ever has done or ever will do it done. Well done. Yeah. Thank you, Gillian Lynn and Brian Blessed. Well, now, because, uh, like yourself,